In this video, I'm going to show you how to capture VHS tapes using your PC with the IO Data Capture device and OBS software. When I went on Amazon, I found that this IO Data Capture device is the best bang for your buck when it comes to video capture using your PC. It's just about $60, and there's other ones out there that basically look like this, but it doesn't work like this. The video quality is really poor with those that are about like 10 or $15. So do yourself a favor, stay away from that and get yourself this one. It's really good. And it comes with a CD and the CD has a driver and it's basically just a plug and play. You put it in your computer and you open it up and it should download the driver immediately. You might have to toy with it just a little bit, but it is pretty simple and straightforward. If you do not have a CD DVD player to go along with your PC, I'd suggest just buying one on Amazon. They're just about $25, $30 to get one because I know that you can find drivers to download for this, but I really don't know about the websites and it was a little iffy to me about downloading it. This was really, really straightforward and I think it's the best thing to do. Just get yourself a CD, DVD player if you need to. Now I'm also using a free software program called OBS Studio and I'm going to show you where that is and how to download that. And that is another great software program to be able to capture video. Basically what I'm showing you is a great cost-effective way to capture your own old VHS tapes onto your PC. So if you like what I'm saying and you find it useful, instructional, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it if you would support the channel. So let's go ahead and uh, get this stuff all set up. So this is the back of my VCR. You're going to want to find your line outs. You have yellow for video, white for left audio, and red for right audio. Just gonna wanna match them up just like this. And then on the other side, you're going to wanna do the same thing with your capture device. White, yellow, and red. We're gonna now plug this in to the PC. My computer, the USB is right on top. See, and you probably heard the computer recognizing the device. Okay, here we are at my PC. And the first thing I wanna do is download the OBS software program. So just type in the search bar, obsproject.com. And here comes the official website. It's called Open Broadcaster Software. You have your choice of Windows or Mac or the Linux. So we're gonna pick Windows. I already have it installed, so I'm just going to get out of this program. I just wanted to show you where it was at. I'm going to load the OBS Studio. Here it is. It looks a little intimidating. There's a lot going on here. But don't worry, I'm going to make it as simple as possible since we're only doing a VHS transfer. We don't have to worry about all of the other bells and whistles that it has. So the first thing you're going to see is this big black screen. And uh, that's basically your canvas. That is where your video is going to appear. Bottom left, you have scenes. You don't have to do too much here. It already has a scene selected. If you want to add a scene, you can and name it what you want, but for all intents and purposes, scene is fine. We then have sources, and this is where your capture device is going to appear. Your audio mixer window is where you're going to see your levels of your audio. Scene transitions, you don't have to worry about that. And then controls, you have your start recording and your settings. That's basically all you need for this. What I like to do is go into the setting settings first. 
And under the general tab, you have language, English, the theme is Yami. Really not too sure what that is, but don't worry about it. Just keep all that as a default. Updates, output, you don't really need to know anything in this window, so you're fine. Let's go to the video first. When you originally launch it, it's going to set up as a default aspect ratio of 16 by 9. 16 by 9 is a letterbox format, which is on all of our TVs anymore, but the 4 by 3 ratio format is what the VHS tapes were originally recorded at. Now, if you leave it at this 1920 by 1080, it's going to stretch your video and make everyone look wide. People don't like to look wide. So what you want is 1440 by 1080. And that gives you the aspect ratio of 4 by 3. And then for the output resolution, you're going to put the same thing. 1440 by 1080. Down scale filter, you don't have to worry about that. But the common FPS values, FPS stands for frames per second. And we want to record this or capture this at 60 frames per second. Now you have all of these different choices here. And right here is 59.94. That is the United States version for 60 frames per second. If you were European and you did PAL, you'd choose 50. But for us, we're going to do 59.94. Click that, and you can hit Apply. We now want to go to the output. At the top, it says Output Mode Simple. Keep it simple. Don't mess with that. The streaming, you don't need to worry about streaming because we're not streaming. But we're going to go to Recording right here. And we're going to set up our recording path, which is the folder we want all of the video, video to be saved to. So you hit Browse, and you pick your folder. I'm picking the Video Capture Test folder that I already created. We're now going to go to Recording Quality. High quality, medium file size. You have some different options here. Indistinguishable quality, large file, lossless quality, tremendously large file. Because it's VHS, we just need the high quality medium file size. It's going to be perfect. The recording format, MPEG-4, the MP4 format, that is a nice universal format for Mac and PC. So go ahead and choose the MP4. The video encoder. If you don't know what kind of PC you have, you don't know what software, you don't know anything about it, pick the software X264 low CPU usage preset increases file size. That's okay. It's going to get the job done, I promise. And then the encoder is the AAC. That's the default. Leave it there. And audio track, one. Keep that there. There's nothing else here that you need to worry about. So hit OK. All right. We are now back to the main screen. And you hit Scene right here. And the Source. What you want to do is hit this plus sign and hit the Video Capture Device. You can name the Video Capture Device, whatever you want. But it's really not necessary if you're just going to do VHS tapes. So you can just keep it at Video Capture Device and hit OK. We can go over and we can hit Play on our VCR. We have the screen right now. And this is, uh, if you care to know, this is the 2000 National Enduro Series highlights. This is a video that I did back in 2000 when I first started my video career. It's all about motorcycles. So uh, the device is GV USB 2 Analog Capture. That is the device capture that I have plugged into my computer. 
I don't have any other choices here because that is the only device that I have loaded on. If you have other devices loaded on, it's going to give you options. But for this, we're going to just keep it there because that's what it is. Configure video. This is your device driver setup. Move it over. The only thing you really have to worry about here under custom properties is the weave. Make sure that weave is set. Now you have video proc amp and that controls your brightness, your contrast, your hue, your saturation, sharpness. It's all at default. And I gotta tell you, this software program is perfect with the default as it is. So I wouldn't worry about anything else here. Just make sure that weave is checked. You can hit OK. Resolution, device default is fine. Everything else here is good. Don't have to worry about anything else. So now we're over here to the audio mixer. If you see it's green and yellow and red and you see that they're dancing back and forth, so we are getting an audio signal. You really want to keep it within the green and the yellow. You don't want to go into the red. Think of it as a stoplight. Red is stop, red is bad, yellow is warning, green is go, green is good. So it is on this video going into the red a little bit. You just have to move it down and let's just get it somewhere so uh so it's sort of peaking in the yellow maybe around 15 looks good now if you look at your, your canvas again you can see that my picture is really small right here it's not filling the canvas like it should don't worry we're gonna fix that right now what you do is go to video capture device and right click and you go to transform and then you go to stretch to screen and bam, there it is. It's stretched out. Now, if we start getting into some higher, faster motion, you might see that things are a little liney. Let's see if we can fast forward to some motorcycle stuff. Here we go. You can see it's a little liney. The white flashes or the white flashes that I put in the editing. So right click on your video capture device again and go to de-interlacing and see it's under disabled. You want to pick Yadav 2X. You don't really need to know what Yadav 2X means, not important, but what's important is that it made the picture look nice and clean and smooth. You don't have any more lines going across. Scene transition, you don't have to worry about. We already did our controls. And uh, if you want to do a start recording, you can do that just to do a test. And let's see what happens. So let's just go for a few seconds. You see how the video is nice and smooth. Looks good. Let's hit stop recording. Now let's go to our file video capture test it's right here uh it names the file according to the date and the time you did the recording you can right click and you can rename i'm going to do enduro test one let's check it out it looks really nice looks really good it's not liney it's nice and smooth basically looks exactly how i had shot it 20 plus years ago that was a long time ago okay we can get out of that now if i want to capture this entire video what i want to do is this i can take my remote and i'll hit stop and fast forward it to, if it'll work, right? When the counter hits to zero, I'm just hypothetically doing this, you're gonna wanna shut it off. 
And now you can either hit counter reset on the interface or on your remote, or you just simply eject, put the tape back in, it's gonna go to zero, you rewind, that's going to give you how long the tape is to record. You don't wanna sit here and watch the whole thing recording. That can be really time consuming. So what I like to do is I just have a little timer right here and I just do how long the tape is gonna be. It's gonna be an hour and 45 minutes or whatever. Just set the timer and then once it's at the beginning of the tape, it'll say how long the tape is. I hit uh, play. I can hit the start recording. I can hit the start timer. And then whenever the timer goes off, I give myself a minute or two to get back to the computer because I might be somewhere else in the office or in the house. Once that is all done, all I have to do is hit stop recording. And you should have a very nice transfer on your PC. So that's it. That's how you transfer a VHS to a PC in a very cost-effective way with good results. Now, if you don't have this type of equipment and you frankly just don't want to invest in it or you don't have the time, I would love to be able to help you out. You can contact me at info at coloradospringsvideo.com or you can go to my website, coloradospringsvideo.com. I do have a special order form for media that you can fill out and send to me along with your media. I do have the contact information in the description of this video along with all of the software and hardware that I use. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe, like, and ring that bell for future notifications. You have yourself a super wonderful day.